country is so yummy, but there's one problem. You have to deal with a complete ninny baby of cooking ingredients. Egg yolks. <laughs> they do nothing with the too cold, they curdle when it gets too hot, and you gotta treat them super gently, otherwise they'll crack. And that's why I like to use gelatin. It's a manly ingredient that can take all kinds of heat and still do its job. That's why for today's episode, we're gonna make the most manliest, most balls to the wall dessert ever, panna cotta. It's still gonna taste good. Now let's begin work on the panna cotta. Oh my god, CRJ is ripping off binging with Babbitt. No, I'm not. For one thing, I have a boom mic right here. Can you hear me? My lips are against the boom mic and I'm not recording it in post. And I have a second angle right up here. Hello, second angle, here's my face. Anyway, now that I'm done showing off, we can begin for real. So take one packet of gelatin. Hey, CRJ from the future, you're actually gonna need two boxes of gelatin. But that's the amazing thing about gelatin. You can melt everything down and add more in. Unlike that miserable sphere of fat and protein called the egg. Oh, don't overcook me or I'll become all stinky and sulfury and make you fart. Rainbow Dash, I thank you for the sacrifice. Then add four tablespoons of milk. Mix it up nice and good. This step is totally necessary. It's called blooming the gelatin. Because if you were to just add the powdered gelatin to our mixture, it would be a complete grainy mess. Or as I like to call it, panna nata. Uh, let's continue. In a small saucepan, add two cups of heavy cream and one cup of milk. Oh, don't throw this into the sink. We're gonna use this to pour our panna cotta into the molds. Then add half a cup of sugar. I like my panna cotta a bit on the sweet side, but if you prefer traditional, somewhat boring panna cotta, then go with a quarter cup or a third. Heat our cream mixture up over medium high heat. Don't take your eyes off this for one second, because if you do, it'll create a hot creamy mess. Sadly, it's something I'm familiar with. Okay, when it just begins to boil, turn off the heat and add our milk gelatin mixture. Stir until everything is well dissolved. Now, my recommendation is to take a spoon and make sure you can't see any grains of gelatin. Now, let's grab our old measuring cup. You tossed it in the sink, didn't you? Pause the video and watch it. Why do I even bother? Anyway, carefully transfer our panna cotta mixture into the cup. Oh, almost forgot. One teaspoon of vanilla. Now pour it in the molds, and make sure the mold is on something solid like a tray. And stash this away in the fridge. And leave it in there for four to six hours. After a few hours, remove the panna cotta from the fridge and top it off with chocolate shavings. Now before we end the episode, I feel like I need to address the elephant in the room. Last December, I made a panna cotta video that was, in hindsight, pretty lackluster. I was trying to keep up with the YouTube algorithm, so I just farted this one out. And I didn't bother promoting it because I thought it was absolute crap, both the video and the recipe. Didn't help that I actually did have the cold when I was making it. If you're gonna make the panna cotta, use this recipe. This has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and meaning it this time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, smash the like button. If you really liked the video, maybe become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Thursday. Oh, and uh, I know I hated on eggs a lot in this episode, but that egg I cracked earlier in the episode put up one hell of a fight. So, 
They grow a bit like internet trolls. They are tough and mighty and protected when they're in their shell. It's when they come out that they can't handle the heat. Also, they really stink up something. 